Good afternoon. Here we're back again on the Cool Classics. Yeah. And, uh, this and I know who you are. And I know who you are. Ah, you're Ruslan. <laughs> and you're Frank. Are you Frank? I'm Frank. Always. <laughs> always Frank. And you know, on this show, we have the wonderful Consul General of Azerbaijan here in Los Angeles, Nassimi Agayev. And we can talk live. So please call us at 323-473-3100 on LA Talk Live. All right. Well, guys, we are listening right now for Fikret Amirovs. He's an Azerbaijani composer. It's called Sweet on Azerbaijan Folk Tunes. And this is the third movement. You will hear it in, in its entirety next, next week. week yeah. Yep. As well as a few other pieces. And back to our guest. Why don't you talk a little more about the diversity of the... So I read that Azerbaijan is a predominantly Muslim country, right? And Shiites. M- Muslim Shiites. Shi- yes. Shiites. Okay. And there are Sunnis as well. Exactly. And we said that we are going to stay away from politics. But with everything that's going on in the world, can you please explain us what's the difference between <laughs> Shiites and Sunnis? And who is dominating the world now? And <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a less about the um, domination and, and the difference. Actually, and the example of Azerbaijan shows that there isn't much difference. We are all human beings and we can live together peacefully, in harmony, respect each other. So it's possible. So Azerbaijan, as you said, uh, is a, a multicultural country and a multi-religious country. Um, the country is sometimes called land of flames, mm-hmm. land of fire. And the roots of that uh, is that we had the Zoroastrian religion actually was oh, wow. uh, really? uh, came about in the, on the ter- historic territory of Azerbaijan. Uh, in close to Baku, you've got a fire temple that was yes. built by Indian Parsi, wow. who still make pilgrimages from India, like the southern India, to wow. that place. So it's, um, uh, that's why it's called Land of uh, mm-hmm. Flames, Land of Fire. But at the same time, Azerbaijan is one of the ancient uh, uh, nations where Christianity was adopted as a state religion. Wow. It happened in Azerbaijan in 313 AD that the, uh, uh, Christianity was adapted as a state wow. religion of this country. And uh, also, you know, we've got, of course, now large Christian minority, around half a million Christians, Orthodox Russians, uh, Belarusians, Ukrainians. We've got Georgian uh, Christian community. We've got Lutherans, pro- evangelicals, wow. of course, Catholic Church. So large uh, Christian community. At the same time, we have a large Jewish community of about 30,000 people mm-hmm. who have lived in this country for about 2,000 years. Wow. Without ever facing pogroms, discrimination, and often uh, great n- n- Jewish uh, leaders call Azerbaijan a land of no anti-Semitism. Wow. Uh, now we know, Frank, where the Jewish people escaped from, from Egypt. They went to they Azerbaijan. Went to Azerbaijan. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's very possible. <laughs> exactly. Know? And now that's why it's, it's a, a model, a successful mm-hmm. model of peaceful coexistence which I think when hope, we hope that can be replicated in other places of the mm-hmm. world where there are so many problems. And it's not only just about <coughs> a religious harmony between different, dif- different mm-hmm. religious communities in Azerbaijan. It's also about the harmony within Islam itself, which is uh, of a great importance. Mm-hmm. In Azerbaijan, which is a majority Shiite population, mm-hmm. you've got like uh, 75% Shiites and the rest are Sunnis. Mm-hmm there are no problems between the two denominations of Islam. So Shiites and Sunnis have coexisted peacefully for centuries. And as government, we try to foster those traditions. Mm -hmm. Like a couple of months ago, we launched at our largest mosque, uh, the unity prayer, uh, which will happen every Friday, Mm -hmm. uh, or actually has been happening already every Friday, where Sunnis and Shiites come together and pray together. And the imams take take turns. So it's a also a message to all those places where are, there are confrontations, divisions, sectarianism, that it's absurd. We can live together. We can love each other. The the fighting is not needed. Why don't we listen right now for another example of Azerbaijani mugam that's recorded by an ensemble called Land of Flames, and this mugam is called Sun of the Sky Rhythmic Mugam, and that's a true original mugam. And please, guys, listen how the singer sings. You will hear this remarkable, incredible trills that the singer does uh, through really wide intervals, which is 
appropriate only for Azerbaijan and Mugam. I don't know any other example of such. No, type and of I and yeah. I actually had was practicing part of the style <laughs> on my own voice. <laughs> it takes a lot. Of I liked it. It takes we'll a lot it. of practice to more. get these like things it. done. <laughs> so please. Can you believe that voice? It's an incredible sound, an incredible technical feat to be singing in that style with those trills and the voice going between two different things and still keeping it in tune like that with the background. It's really virtuosic. H really how do we call it, Frank? Is this bel canto? No, it's Az Azerbaijani <laughs> canto. canto. <laughs> <laughs> it's Baku canto. Baku canto. <laughs> Baku canto. <laughs> So we have a few more examples of Azerbaijani singers singing, and those are not folk uh, sort of ba background mm -hmm. singers. They're professionally trained right, singers right. Uh, from the beginning of the 20th century up to the contemporary days, and we thought it might be interesting to uh, play it for you guys just to show how it evolved within just a span of the century. And um, uh, Mr. Consul, maybe you could tell us a couple of words about the uh, uh, first operetta that was composed right in the Muslim world. Exactly. Uh, called Arshin Malalan, the cloth peddler. Exactly. Um. So the, uh, the greatest, one of the greatest composers Azerbaijan has is Uzair Hajibayev or mm -hmm. Hajibayli. So Uzair Hajibayli, actually, he became the author of the first opera, which was uh, Leyli Majnun. Mm -hmm based on uh, uh, so the same story. First opera uh, in Muslim world? First or opera in the Muslim in world, Muslim also world. first operetta in the Muslim world. Uh -huh. Wow. Right. So uh, 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 the opera was Leili Majnun and the operetta was Klaus Pedler. Question. Yeah. Be I know that in some Muslim countries, particularly in the beginning of the 20th century, women were not allowed on the stage. Yes. Was exactly. that the case in Azerbaijan as well? Exactly, exactly. That's why uh, when they had the first staging of this operetta, uh -huh. so uh, men, <laughs> would have to play the woman female roles wow. so but most of the men back then had mustache uh oh <laughs> so and they had to then shave their mustache shave over their mustache and because ah, yes, yes. <laughs> or <laughs> some of them were not able to do it they didn't want to do it so they hid the mustache under a whale wow. but you know that was a big sacrifice from those actors uh -huh. and be for the sake of art and It music. is, but you know, in a sense, it sounds somewhat conservative because women were not allowed on the stage, and yet putting it in modern parliament, <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> advanced <laughs> because they were dressing as exactly. women. By the same token, <laughs> they were allowed to vote. <laughs> they didn't have to exactly. wear hijab this or anything. This was in, yeah. in 1913. It's so interesting. Oh, so that was before, it was before the, the 1913. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the first opera that was staged, yeah. and yes, five, uh, no, oh, six years later, as a Virginian woman got the voting rights. So, and it all changed. Then the woman went to the stage, we had the actually first female woman singer uh -huh. on stage in the Muslim world as well. 
Was so the concert sold out? So Do you know that? Sold out. Uh, pe- people, <laughs> there. people would hang on the walls to, to watch it. So sometimes it the, the, art, <laughs> the art can be the predecessor exactly. of the actual change, the progressive Bring change. change. You never know. Yeah. And in this uh, operetta, Klaus Pedler became so famous in the region that they would take out uh, outside of Azerbaijan. Mm. And uh, then they made a movie of this based on this operetta in 1945, which became a hit in the Soviet kinema- kinema- cinematography. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It was translated into around like 80 languages wow. and was shown in 130 countries. Wow. Wow. In, in, uh, in China alone, it was uh, the, the operetta, Klaus mm-hmm. Pedler, was staged 300 times. Really? Wow. Now so is, is the and we brought it to Los Angeles uh, yes. three years ago. Yeah, year uh-huh. 2013. The, uh, 2013 yeah. to the music center, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there it was performed to a crowd of 3,000 people Amazing. by Americans. So Americans would sing in Azerbaijani language. Wow. And all the dialogues, of course, were English. So it was a nice mixture. Yeah. It was a very successful performance. Is it still performed a lot in Azerbaijan? A lot, a lot yes. A Every lot, season yeah. our uh, um, uh, opera theater yeah. performs it, of course. Yeah. It's a very beloved song. Yeah. So why don't we listen right now for an aria from this um, uh, uh, opera uh, performed by Rashid Beybudov. He was a tenor of the beginning of 20th century. You guys will hear the difference between the folk singing and that what Azerbaijani professional singers can do. What do you think? I, well, I love it. I, I really love it. I love the sound of his voice, and the, the music is really very beautiful. And the language sounds very melodical, isn't it? It, Almost like it, Italian, it seems right? like the language you know works very, very well with the music. So, so maybe you can tell us but what the song if, is yeah, about. Yeah, maybe you can you tell, tell us, us the, what the, the, song. the song is about love. So this, this young man wants to get married, and actually he wants um, to marry the person he has chosen, but now there are obstacles for that, so now he declares that I have troubles, etc. So that's how he explains his suffering. Okay. And he can marry only one woman now, you know, yeah, that yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. problem. Right, 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 right. So that's, uh, the, the story evolves, the story of Klaus Pedler or Arshan Malalan evolves in Azerbaijan's Karabakh region, which is an, which is an ancient region and which has produced so many poets, poems, uh, by the, the writers and composers. Uzeir Hajibayev himself is from Karabakh region, mm. from the sh- city of Shusha in that mm-hmm. region, mm-hmm. the historical capital. So there, this young man, young merchant, wants to marry uh, by his own choice. You know, mm-hmm. Back then, 100 years ago, there were lots of arranged marriages, mm-hmm. but he says, I'm going to s- see first whom I'm going to marry and love her and then marry. But that's a bit challenging. So what he does, he disguises as a, as a cloth peddler and goes in different houses because only clothes peddlers can get into the can house, into and, house. See yeah. the and, 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 and see the woman and see the woman because they can't great way to right? find the, uh, the yeah. woman the future wife right, right, right. so that's ah. the whole story who p- uh, now I have a question in the household who picks out the, m- the cloth peddler the 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 the, the father or the, the, the father uh, the or the women pick out the only cloth. woman the woman woman, woman. so, cl- the cl- so, that's woman. He gets so then the he, he was able to choose yeah. the, the the future wife and the yeah. of course there was a mutual love right. uh, so that's in general this whole operette is very 
very simple, but it's a strong back then, strong message, message. against outdated traditions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. as you are com- absolutely right, so art can be predecessor for Everything. big for changes change. to come. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Why not we move a little further to the second half of 20th century? We will listen for a wonderful singer, Muslim Magamayev, who is an Azerbaijani singer. And now you guys will hear a truly European style of singing. Um, and you'll hear this evolvement right, from the uh, singing Granada to the a, Granada a, a Hispanic yeah. song Mexican Hispanic song, song. Yeah. in yeah. Spanish he's doing it in Spanish, Spanish. Yeah. 